Welcome back to Deposing a Dictator, the Elements of Modern Problem Solving. As we said, the basic elements of problem solving involve six cycles. First cycle is discovery, finding out what you really want and what are the challenges and obstacles that you need to overcome. Research, get reliable research so that you can make a set of choices on which you can decide as the course of action. So decision making is the third cycle. Fourth cycle is discussion, bringing stakeholders into the process to get feedback on your choices and to get com uh, commitment for the direction you want to go. Act and act effectively and efficiently and determinedly. And finally, to evaluate and adjust. I've used the example of a personal experience of facing 18 political leaders who wanted to, were in the process of defeating Slobodan Milosevic, uh, who was the president of the country of Serbia, or at that time, the former Republic of Yugosla uh, Yugoslavia. They had had many successes in prior elections, but in, in many cases, and most cases, much of the victories they had won had been taken back through corruption and other things that happen when you live under a dictatorship. What was necessary in 2000, different from the prior elections, was we had to find out what was the biggest goal we were trying to achieve and solve that problem so that the voters were willing to vote for this coalition and accept the big changes that were to come. And we did that by focusing the, the election, the management process, operation and organization to demonstrate that these 18 leaders could effectively govern if elected. Now, there were several other big issues that we had to tackle. And we tackled them as we helped these leaders understand what questions they needed to ask. First thing was, how do we target voters in order to get 50%? And in order to, to ensure that this election could not be stolen, as others had, we had to ensure that, we, that more than 50% of the vote went to the coalition. The opposition had been concerned as to how they were going to reach voters because in former communist countries, media was controlled by the ruling party, in this case, Slobodan Milosevic. He had control of all national media. When we began the discovery process, the consulting teams found out that in the 1996 elections, 32 cities were won and retained um, by the opposition leaders. By researching past election data as it was available, we found that 60% of the voters we needed to target lived in the coverage area of that media. It became easy for the opposition to see that their activities, if done on the, on the local level, could be covered and the national media was not as critical. So the two decisions made when looking at the options was that the campaign be taken directly to the people and second, we bypass the national media. We let it become less relevant. Once that decision was made, it was clear what kind of campaign had to be run. And of course, it was a grassroots campaign. New and different for the communist style campaigning, but it was the right style of campaigning for people who weren't sure if they were willing to vote for change. The next problem that we had to look is what were the messages that would resonate with people? We knew that the coalition was staying in the 40% of vote and they had to get more than 50%. So the first thing that we uncovered in research through interviews with voters is they didn't see Milosevic as a dictator in the same way that European countries or America understands dictatorship there was still a level of loyalty to him. So rather than be harshly negative, we simply changed the opening sentence of the message to Milosevic has had his chance and he failed. His economic policies have not worked. 
that allowed voters to hear the, the, a truthful statement and agree with it. The next changes about messages that were relevant to t key audiences is we had to find that margin of victory, those groups of people who were going to close that 10 or so percent gap. First group we found were women, second group youth. Women were concerned and conservative because the economy had been so difficult. But once we um, t did the research and did re uh, interviews, we found that a sentence that said, the new direction will provide the jobs and opportunities needed in order to keep our children and their grandchildren in Serbia, women were on board. The change in some areas was by as much as 75%. With young people, it was different, especially among university students. They were already on board. Money was invested in creating transportation uh, access in order to get the university students from university to their hometowns to cast their votes on, on election day in September of 2000. So that led to the action steps. And probably the most important action step, again, went back to that big goal, had to show voters that we could govern. Words were not going to convince them of that. The voters in Serbia were very sensitive to propaganda. So it had to be a story that they could see and agree with and connect with. So using the youth arm of the uh, coalition fighting Milosevic, came up with a strategy that would run a 10-day bus tour at the end of the campaign that showed all of the national leaders together and collaboration between local leaders and national leaders. It was the four weeks in preparation that was the big change because instead of stovepiping operations where each operation ran by itself and there was no integration or cross communications, that all had to change. Instead, everything was integrated in order to make the pictures that ultimately came out to demonstrate that these folks were all together, all in for defeat of Milosevic in 2000, which of course did happen. The group did get 50.35% of the vote and Milosevic got 39%. Other candidates got everything else thus making it impossible for Milosevic to steal that campaign as he had stolen others. In the end, the citizens won what has become known as the tractor revolution when they drove farm implements up the steps of the federal parliament in Belgrade to ensure that um, they took control of their own country. And while there's much more to be done, the real heroes in all of this are the citizens of Serbia, both then and now, who struggle for change. But what I really hope to show in this discussion and in this case study is how the use of problem solving can be used for something as the things that we face every day, whether it's the choice, of course, is the choice of university, the choice of our first and second jobs. But it also is a kind of mental discipline and life skill that can be used when you confront things you've never seen before and have to figure out how to succeed. If you think about it, we all have voices in our heads. We all have people who give us their opinions. And in order for us to make decisions that are right for us, we need to be able to solve our own problems. Developing good problem-solving skills is something that can be used personally and professionally and it will help you direct the course of your own history.